Her, uh, Bob actually lived uh, for a time with Willie's brother, Gene. Uh, they shared a house together uh, many years ago. And all life seemed to come full circle when he came and came to our Bible study just a few weeks before he passed away. Uh, a man of uh, just great talent uh, who would uh, sit outside at the farmer's market in Clinton uh, selling his books of poetry and was a, a wonderful, wonderful man. I believe his nephew is going to come and come up and come up and say a few words. Okay. Um, basically, what I remember my uncle Bob um, the most was his, for the most was his tenacity. I mean, just he was growing, you know, just hearing stories about him in high school. Just he was such an athlete, you know, three-sport athlete, you know. Um, he went, he went to college and excelled at Syracuse University. Um, even just throughout his life, you know, he always he always worked hard at whatever he did, whether it was his job or his um, his hobby, such as running. I mean, he's he's ran he ran so many races throughout his life, you know. But really, the the biggest thing which defines his tenacity was once, you know, he was a huge runner, and then he got diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, you know. And most people, once you know, if they get diagnosed with that and they're going to treatments and stuff. They're they're not going to run it. They're not going to want to run at all. But he just he just kept going. He took that as a challenge. I mean, he had stage four colon cancer and he ran like the 5K, the Boilermaker 5K. I mean, that's insane. I mean, he was, and they gave him when he got diagnosed. They told him he had six months to live. And um, I mean, and he ended up living for like another year or two. So I mean, he really just all the way until the end. He, he fought, you know. Um, but another one of um, Bob's big. Um, pursuits was poetry. He loved poetry. As um, Jay mentioned, he liked to sell his books at the farmer's market. You know, and that was really a big thing for him because throughout his life he had always written poems, but they just, you know, they kind of were just stashed in a little binder, you know, under his bed, and that was it. But um, a couple years ago, my aunt and him decided to publish a book, just a little poem book called Saturday People and Other Poems. I actually have that with me. Um, so, in honor of remembering him, I'm going to read a poem that he wrote. Um, he, Bob lived a lot of his adult years out west in Wyoming, you know, where obviously it's red and there's a lot of deserts. So when he was out there, he wrote this um, poem called Song of the Red Desert. I'm going to read that. Off the path of clock driven commerce, where truckers and salesmen race to achieve documentable results, lies an expanse flatness, a far off horizon, dunes of wind swept sand, very few humans in silence. We all keep passing, by, passing it, racing by again, as if we've lost our peripheral vision. Could we ever stop, sweep the terrain with our senses for once? Begin to see coyotes, foxes, struggling desert growth? Could we listen to the wind, whatever motion of living we might chance to hear? The sunlight, sand, and horizon speak their own way. If just one time we were alert to it, could we arrange to stop, look, listen? Like Indians, pioneers, and settlers once did? If we could stop this racing, this striving, for two hours or 30 minutes, not measure our living, could we hear nature singing, the desert singing? And I, that was, I don't know, that was just one of the poems that really struck us the most, you know. We, I mean, it, can, it just, you know, it, it, you can really apply that to anything, you know, especially in today's life with our gadgets, you know, like, you know, we just need, sometimes we just need to stop and just appreciate nature, and appreciate life. And I feel like that's also one of the biggest lessons Michael taught me in my family.